I'm PC Martin Clark and I'm the traffic officer investigating the collision that occurred on the 24th of October 2016 in Eldine Drive, Harrogate, between a Vauxhall van owned by Paradise Heating Limited and Amy Williams, aged 10. On arriving at the scene, I ascertained that the driver, Dean Martin, appeared to be uninjured and that Amy Williams was breathing but had suffered serious injury as a result of the collision. An emergency ambulance arrived on scene shortly afterwards and took Amy to A&E at Harrogate District Hospital. I conducted a roadside drink and drug test on Mr Martin. The drink test was negative, but the drug test indicated a positive result. I arrested Mr Martin on suspicion of careless driving and driving a motor vehicle with a specified controlled drug in the body above the specified limit for that drug. My initial investigation into the causes of the crash showed that the vehicle's near side front tyre was below the legal tread depth limit and was visibly worn to excess. The vehicle's windscreen washer reservoir was empty. It would appear that this, along with the clutter on the vehicle's dashboard, would have significantly reduced the driver's visibility. At the time of the collision, the weather conditions were poor with low sun and intermittent rain showers. The vehicle telematics indicated that the vehicle was travelling at 39.6 miles per hour prior to braking. Eldine Drive has a 30 miles an hour speed limit. The vehicle was also discovered to be overweight on its front axle. It would seem that this was caused by an insecure load moving forwards under heavy braking. Mr Martin admitted he was distracted by a call from his manager, Trevor Hall, immediately prior to becoming aware of the pedestrian crossing the road. Mr Martin answered the call against company policy as he could see it was his manager calling, also against company policy. He also admitted recreational use of cannabis the night before to help him relax after a long day at work. My conclusions are that the illegal tyre and excess speed significantly increased the stopping distance of the vehicle. The shifting of the load during braking is also likely to have increased the stopping distance further. The measurement calculations indicate the driver's reaction times were delayed. I would suggest that this is as a result of tiredness, the use of cannabis and the poor visibility afforded by the smeared windscreen and the dashboard clutter. He was also by his own admission distracted by the call from his manager. These are the facts of the case which we are considering in this investigation. Hello Martin, Mr. Hi, Greg. Ball and this solicitor for you. Oh come on in please. Mr. Border, could I ask you to take that seat there for me please? And if you could sit there I'd be grateful. Thanks very much. Okay, everything we say is now being digitally recorded. At the end of the interview, I will give you notice which will provide details of how to obtain a copy. The time is 1.10pm. The date is the 24th of October 2016. The interview is taking place in the Ridings Police Station. I am PC241 Martin Clark of the Road Policing Unit. There are no other police officers present. Please could you say your full name and date of birth? Uh, Dean Robert Martin, 1st of September 1982. Thank you, Dean. Also present in the room is your solicitor. Could you please state your full name, date of birth and the company that you work for? Alan Michael Border, 13th of December 1960, ABS Solicitors representing Paradise Gas Heating. Thank you. Dean, before we go any further, I have to caution you that you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand the caution? Yes, yes I do. Thank you. Mr Martin, you are here in connection with an incident that occurred at around 8.35 this morning on Eldine Drive, East Harrogate. I need to inform you that the pedestrian involved, Amy Williams, has since died of her injuries and we are now investigating this as a fatality. Do you understand that? It would help if you could tell me what happened this morning, starting from the time you got up. Okay, I was a bit tired. Um, I felt a bit rough. 
I'd had a long day yesterday um, and didn't get the job done till late in the day. Um, you know how it is with this type of work. Um, the sales team sell a customer another boiler, tell the customer it's going to be up and running in next to no time, um, and then it's down to me to get the job done. It took me a full 12 hours to do that job yesterday, uh, and it was an hour's drive each way. I loaded up the van with the tools, the kit, scrap boiler, uh, the old heavy metal water tanks and the rubbish. Um, the van was full, I'd already got the new boiler and stuff ready for today as well because it saves keep going back to the depot. Um, on the way back I was starving, uh, I hadn't eaten all day so I stopped uh, off at a McDonald's. Uh, I eat my burger etc on the way back and got home just after 11pm. I was knackered so I had a shower, something to drink and then bed. My missus wasn't chuffed because we'd hardly seen each other lately. Thanks for letting me know that Dean. Now go on with what happened this morning. Well, to be honest, I overlaid a little, so I had a quick brew, um, jumped in the van and set off for the job in Thursk. Uh, I was supposed to be there for 8.30am, but didn't leave home uh, in panel until 8.15, I think. Um, I reckon it would take me about three quarters of an hour or so, so I had to get a move on. You say you just jumped into your company van. Did you do your daily checks before you moved off? Yeah, I can see where you're going with this. No, I didn't do my checks. It's my normal van. I know if something's wrong with it. So, uh, was everything okay, Dean? Well, I knew enough fuel to get there. Look, we have these nice vans which are leased. Uh, the manager looks after all of the servicing um, and lets us know if anything goes wrong with it. So the answer to your question is no. Uh, I don't do regular checks. I know we should, um, but we just don't have enough time. I've got to get the job done. You also mention you must get a move on when travelling. What do you mean by that? You know how it is, time is money. I suppose I'm like all guys doing the job. Uh, I'll get my foot down when I can. Yes, I admit that Trev, the manager, had mentioned to me about some speed uh, in the past. It showed up on some fancy management programme. Uh, but it, it's the real world and um, we're under pressure to get the jobs done. Anyway, I'm a gas engineer, not a driver. Um, I've got six points on my licence uh, for speed cameras, so it can't be that bad. You also failed a roadside drug test, and the further blood tests have shown that you have driven a motor vehicle with 3.9 nanograms of cannabis per litre of blood. I can tell you that the limit is two nanograms. What have you to say about that? Look, I only have a quick smoke at the end of the day to chill. I didn't realise that it was wrong. Uh, and I don't think it affected me. Also, that was yesterday, I should be okay today. Okay then, Dean, you have omitted the drugs bit. Now you have left home this morning, what happened next? I have been going a bit. Uh, I went down Eldine Drive um, and my mobile rang. I eventually found the phone on the passenger seat under some papers. Uh, I had put it into the hands free, but it kept falling off because the, the cradle was broken. Um, what happened then? Well, I picked it up, saw it was Trev, um, and as I looked back, suddenly saw this young girl crossing the road, uh, so I hit the brakes. I tried to swerve, um, and all, all hell broke loose. Uh, things were crashing around inside the back, um, and I just hit her on my near side. I jumped out as quickly, uh, as, I jumped out as quickly as I could, and she was just laying in the road. People started to gather around, uh, and somebody called an ambulance. I'm so sorry. I should have been looking at the road, not my phone. I was going too fast. The, wa the van wouldn't stop quick enough. Why did, why did bloody Trev have to call me just then? Well, since it happened, I've been going over and over it again. If I'd not been going so quick, if I'd not looked at my phone, uh, and if it had been in its cradle and I had my hands free, if the van would have stopped quicker, I suppose all the weight in the back didn't help. Also, that investigator at the scene said that my tyres were illegal. I should have noticed that. If I'd not been rushing to meet a tight job schedule. But honestly, it wasn't just me. It's all of our faults that this happened. Pressure to get the jobs done, the long hours, Trevor always ring, ringing me and pressurising me. And they were just pushing and pushing to get the job done. And now a little girl's dead.
This interview is to discuss you and your company's involvement in a fatal incident that took place this morning on Eldeen Drive, involving a vehicle operated by your company and a pedestrian. I have some questions that I would like you to answer for me. Can you confirm that it was your company's vehicle that was involved in the incident and also who was driving the vehicle? Yes, it's one of ours and it's allocated to Dean Martin and he's one of our engineers. Thank you. Is it um, you who is responsible for the operation of the vehicles within your business? <laughs> yeah, it's me. On top of all the other jobs I have, you know, it, it's part of what I do. It's part of the job. I have limited support in the office, so basically I just get on with it. We're not a big company, but we're really busy. OK, so um, how many vehicles do you manage? Well, again, you know, all of them really they're my responsibility um, we have nine vans three of them are a little bit bigger they're for the big heavy jobs and six normal service vans and they're for the engineers really okay um, do you check the roadworthiness of all of the vans mr hall no not really i don't very often see them anyway it's the driver's responsibility to check the vans and report it if there's anything wrong you know we give them defect books you know to do the walk around checks, make sure there's everything okay with the vehicles. Thinking about it, I should really take time out to check these defect reports. But, you know, again, I'm busy. You know, I haven't got time to do that. Okay, Mr. Hall. Well, um, initial reports on the van uh, Mr. Martin used um, have highlighted illegal tyres and overloading amongst factors contributing to the incident. Does um, Dean Martin bring any issues to your attention about the state of his van? No, apart from Dean, he's a good lad, but he's forever wanting to change the service of the date. You know, I book him, he tries to change him. You know, end of the day, Dean's a good lad, but he says to me it costs him money if his van's off the road, even for a day. You know what it's like. He, <laughs> I've tried reasoning with him, but, you know, Dean knows it all and you can't tell him anything anyway. I tried to speak to him recently about a speeding report I had from our own telematic systems. That's cost a fortune to fit, by the way, as well. But Dean just came in, shrugged it off and said, big brother watching, you know. He knows he's one of our best engineers and he can't do no wrong. You know, at the end of the day, as I said, he's a nice lad. I do try to talk to him, but he's always too busy. Makes excuses. Um, what about the comment on overloading? Well, the vans are well stocked with tools, new parts, piping boilers, you know, the vans are pretty stocked up. I suppose when they're clearing out and taking away the scrap tanks, they can be quite heavy. Mind you, we instruct our engineers should always come back to the depot and remove the scrap to the pile at the back of the warehouse. I think Dean must have been going to, that, to do that at his next job. If we think a job is heavy, we normally put one of the three heavier vans, you know, the O-licence vans, but Dean's our best engineer and he doesn't have a license for the bigger vans anyway. Um, OK, back to this incident. It is alleged that Mr Martin was speeding, using his mobile phone and driving an unroadworthy company vehicle. Have you got anything to say about that? You know, as I said earlier, Dean's a lovely lad. It wouldn't surprise me that he was speeding. As I'm now aware, he overslept this morning. And I've said before, he doesn't hang around. He's got to get the job done, as the telematics clearly had shown. As far as the mobile phone is concerned, yeah, that was me. You see, the client had called the sales line to see where Dean was because he hadn't arrived at the job. So I called Dean, you know, it rang a few times, then it cut off when he answered. A little later he called back to say he was involved in a bad accident. All hell let loose back in the office, as I told Mike, the boss, and then he made me call the customer to say the job would be delayed. I didn't know that there was a little girl who had been killed. I don't know, I don't know what to say. It's terrible. I really am so sorry. Anyway, what do you mean by he was using a vehicle that was unroadworthy? I don't understand. So you know nothing about illegal tyres? No, I don't. Dean should know to check his vehicle daily as per our company policy. And if there's anything wrong, report it. I keep telling him this. It's not as if he has to pay for it out of his own pocket. We always get repairs to all of our vans fixed. If it's tyres, then we just tell him to go into a tyre dealer 
and it's done straight away. That's how we do it here. We have a company policy with all the advice, contacts, rules, what more can we do? So there's no excuse on Dean's part. One last question, Mr Hall. Um, where can we find this company policy and the advice you mentioned? Well, we have all our health and safety policies that we drafted up several years ago. We put a pack in each of the vans and the main policies are kept back at the office, I think. OK, thank you for being so candid, Mr Hall. That's all for now. We may need to speak with you again um, as this is being treated as a work-related incident. Okay, everything we say is now being digitally recorded. At the end of the interview, I will give you notice which will provide details of how to obtain a copy. The time is now 3 p.m. The interview is taking place in the Ridings Police Station. I am PC241 Martin Clark of the Road Policing Unit. Um, please could you state your full name and date of birth? Michael Brown, date of birth, 5th of February 1971. Thank you. Also present is your solicitor. Could you please state your full name, date of birth, and the company that you work for? I'm Alan Michael Border, date of birth, 13th of December 1960, and I'm representing ABS solicitors. Thank you very much. What I must now do is caution you that you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later allow on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand the caution? Yeah, but I just don't understand what I'm doing here. Um, obviously everything will be explained to you as we progress through the interview, okay? This interview is to discuss your company's involvement in a fatal incident that took place this morning on Eldine Drive, involving a vehicle operated by your company and a pedestrian. I have some questions that I would like you to answer for me. Firstly, can you confirm that it was your company's vehicle that was involved in the incident and also who was driving the vehicle? Yeah, it's uh, one of our vehicles and it was being driven by one of our engineers, Dean Martin. Thank you. Is it uh, you who is responsible for the operation of the vehicles within your business? Uh, I suppose so, ultimately. But I do have a manager, Trev Hall, who looks after the daily stuff of allocating jobs and looking after the vehicle fleet. We lease our vans to minimise what we do, so he just makes sure they are OK. OK, so this manager, Trevor Hall, is that your transport manager? Well. The vans are part of his job. He does other things. I run a slick team. We have lots of jobs all over. I'm busy with sales and the important stuff, as you can imagine. So I leave it to him. I don't need to know unless the sales are affected and they're not being done. OK, so um, you're, you're not in daily effective control of the fleet then? I suppose not, but it works OK. We don't get into trouble when I try to do the right thing. OK, Mr Brown, does Mr Hall bring any issues to your attention about running the fleet of vans? We have the odd occasion where there might be, he gets men mentions about some speeding or something like that. But that happens in all companies, doesn't it? What about Mr Martin? Has Mr Hall brought anything to your attention about him? Not really. Uh, from what I recall, only a moan about speeding or something a while ago. But Dean Martin is one of our best engineers. He gets the job done. And the clients always like him. Um, and he finishes the job well as well, which is, uh, which is what I like in someone. He puts himself out there, you know. OK, back to this incident. It is alleged that Mr Martin was speeding, using his mobile phone, driving an unroadworthy company vehicle. And he also failed a roadside drug test. Have you got anything to say about that? Well, I wouldn't know anything about the speeding. As far as, I know, as far as I know, for using his mobile phone, we use hands-free. So, and that's in all the vehicles, it has to be hands-free, so he shouldn't have been doing that. Our vans are serviced regularly, so I don't know where you get their unworthy, unroadworthy. The garage bills are stacking up. And drugs, pff, I didn't know he used his drugs. What an idiot. So you know nothing about illegal tyres and the van being overloaded? No, I don't. I'm not a cowboy operator. The vans are in good nick, they're in good condition. I run a slick company. We are governed by legislation in our industry. 
we've got a really good reputation. One last question, Mr. Brown. Do you provide driver training for your van drivers? Why would I provide driver training? They're gas engineers. No, I do not provide driver training. OK, um, thank you for being so candid, Mr. Brown. That's all for now. We may need to speak with you again, and I'm sure that either our officers or the health and safety executive will visit your company during their investigations, as this is now being treated as a work-related incident. Do you understand that? Yes. I'm Claire Britcher reporting for FTA News from York Crown Court, where we're expecting sentencing on three men in the tragic case of 10-year-old Amy Williams, who was killed by a speeding van. In court today are the driver, Dean Martin, who previously admitted causing death by careless and inconsiderate driving, aggravated by speed and drugs. His operations manager, Trevor Hall, and Paradise Gas Heating's managing director, Mike Brown. The crash involved a van operated by Paradise, which struck Amy at speed in Eldine Drive. Martin admitted being distracted from driving by using his phone to answer a call from Hall. The van was doing almost 40 miles an hour in a 30 zone and was found to be in an unroadworthy condition with defective tyres as well as being overloaded. These factors were found to have significantly contributed to both causing the crash and its severity. Amy Williams later died from her injuries. Police today made a statement about the tragic case. I was the investigating officer on this sad case um, and it's clear to me this is an incident that clearly should not have happened. The driver put his own interests uh, before that of other road users. He failed to abide by the rules of the road and he clearly ignored company policies around the use of mobile phones and vehicle checks. The company clearly uh, failed to manage their driver. He may have been an excellent gas fitter but he failed to meet the standards of a professional driver, which in this day and age is just not acceptable. Paradise Gas Heating allowed him to ignore their own policies and failed to act on clear evidence that he regularly drove at excessive speed and he failed blatantly to check his vehicle. There is overwhelming evidence that the company failed to take their duty as a commercial vehicle operator seriously. We're hearing that the judge has now delivered his sentences on the three defendants. Managing Director Brown had previously entered a guilty plea on behalf of Paradise Gas Heating for breaching Section 3 of the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974. The judge said the firm fell far short of what is expected of a company managing people who drive for work. He said the failings contributed to an innocent member of the public losing her life. He fined Paradise Gas Heating a quarter of a million pounds, plus full prosecution costs. A stunned Brown shouted, that will ruin my business, I can't afford that, before being told to sit down by the judge. Operations manager Hall, who had admitted being in breach of Section 7 of the Health and Safety Act due to his role in the incident, was given a high-level community order of 200 hours unpaid work, plus full costs. The judge said he had spared Hall from custody because of his previous good character and guilty plea. The driver, Martin, kept his head bowed and was clearly stunned when the judge jailed him for four years, telling the court society will not accept any driver disregarding laws which are there for everyone's safety, especially incidents caused by mobile phone use, excessive speed and driving with illegal drugs in your system. Martin was also banned from driving for four years and ordered to take an extended driving retest. And that's all from me at the conclusion of this tragic incident. Claire Britcher in York for FTA News.